Good morning, everyone. I'm Megan Collip. Along here with Scott Micklin. There you are, Megan Collip. Oh, good morning. How are I you? Am. Good. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. We're back. We're back in action. Yes. To start everybody's weekend off. Exactly. Almost weekend. Almost weekend. That's true. Yes. Some things are already started, though. Some things like what? Like the balloon rally. The balloon fiesta. Weather is, permitting is, is it balloon the fiesta rally. Or That's the an reality? Albuquerque thing. Okay. No, we have a rally. All right. All right. We have a rally. Four okay. Corners balloon rally. I stand rally. correctly. We are, yep. So weather permitting, the balloons may or may not be flying at this very moment. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. So there's that. Happening. That's exciting. And other stuff too. And Animus River Jams are happening a little bit later on today along the river at the Farmington Museum. Those are, have you ever been to I, one of those? I have. I yes. love the Animus River Jams. Exactly. So we have that going on and, and lots of other things that escape my little brain at the moment. But lots going on in small town America. True. And Farmington too. <laughs> you don't consider Farmington a small town? I do not. Interesting. I, I do not. I do. Really? Yeah. See, I grew City up. City girl. I grew up in a small town. We had okay. 2,500 people. Oh and my that gosh! Is small town America. Yeah, how many stoplights did you have? Like one. Um, one, and it flashed yellow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it didn't even have all three phases. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I know, but nice. yeah. So there you are. Anyway, we, this is solutions from the street. We want to remind everyone why we're here. Yes, indeed. Right? This so, is our program, our solutions-based journalism program. Right, where we look at a local problem or opportunity. Yes. And interview problem solvers. Exactly. Grassroots problem solvers, non-governmental. Exactly. Yes. Although one of our guests is government. Is government. That's okay. But we doesn't. We don't hold it's it against a, it's her a, at all. No, not at all. No, no. It's a governmental position that helps out a ton of nonprofits in town. Very true. Yes. And and today's program is a great example of a public-private partnership that has really helped make this happen. Yes. And um, it is a subject that we've talked about before on this show too. Indeed. So we're just we're following this project from A to Z, from start to finish. That's right. That's true. So we're grateful to have them with us this morning. We want to welcome back to the show from the uh, Tibbetts All Abilities Park Foundation, uh, Jessica Lazabi is here. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me on again. You Good bet. You guys. Oh, always great to have you here. And our government representative, but we love you anyway, Natalie Spruill. Thank you for being here, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs for the City of Farmington. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. That's a big mouthful. It is a big you mouthful. Got through it. I got through it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Always it's happy true. to be here. We're so glad that you're here. And and so glad, I know, I think I speak for a lot of folks um, that are really appreciative of the city of Farmington's leadership and, and help in getting this project off the ground and, and where it is today that we'll be talking about and where it's heading in the future. So been a lot of great great success stories so thank you again yeah, on behalf of the public i think and and with all the leadership from the city so without any further ado let's talk a little bit about um the latest for the uh tibbetts all abilities park foundation and jessica the idea that while you're here is because you guys are having an event in just a couple of weeks almost right yes. coming up soon yep it's our third annual um 2k walk run roll and it will be happening happening at the future site of the park mm -hmm. um though it is under construction for phase one i'm sure natalie will get we'll be hearing all about that yeah but yes we're really excited to have it there and we have a few logistics things we want to get out there and yeah hope a lot of people come very good registration is now open and the event will raise money for the foundation yes for the foundation we're looking at phases two and three that we'd like to help fund so um We'd love all the sponsors and registrants we can get for okay. booths if you're interested. Right. Very good. The event's October 12th. Yes. We should mention that. And again, folks can show up and register. If you register by, what, next Tuesday, October 1st, you get your guaranteed a t-shirt. Yes. Guaranteed a t-shirt by October 1st. And if you want to be a sponsor, get a hold of us by September 30th. That way we can get you the proper advertisement. Got it. On and, the shirts. And what's the best way to reach you? Um, you prefer email? Yeah, they can email it at email us at tap and that's two A's T A A P N M at gmail dot com or they can look on our website tapfoundation dot com. Okay, or message through Facebook for your Facebook page. Yeah, just any way they can find us, I'll I'll take it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Very good. And you do have a couple of major sponsors already, right? That we should give a we shout do. out to. We have a, a huge title sponsor, Farmington Church of Christ, has given us a really generous donation this year and um, took the title sponsorship. And we have a, a number of other sponsors that we're so grateful for. Um, and we're really looking for more booths and a couple more sponsorships if people are interested. Okay. Um, yeah. Very good. They can still sign up. It's not too late. Yes, not too late. Okay. Very, very good. Yeah. 
Megan, once again, I've not let you get a word in edgewise since I introduced you. I'm so That's sorry. That's okay. I'm just trying to do the math in my head as to how long a 2K is. So I don't have much to oh, offer. Oh, well, okay. I mean, it's is it? shorter than a 5K. Yes. Which is... <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? That's, that tracks. We got that. That's okay. tracking in my head. Right. Like a mile, like 1.7 or something? It's something weird like that, and I wish I could tell you the, the right answer. I think it's five or six laps. We'll tell you for sure that morning. Yes. yes. <laughs> but right. we didn't want it to be too much. You know, if you're rolling around on the, sure. on the pressure fine there, it might be a little difficult. So right. Right. just keep it just right. long enough. Good to know. But yeah. that'll, that'll work. But you can do that. You could do that. You I can hype that I could in your sleep. do that. Don't yes. you? I could do that. I think so. Yes. So. I don't know if I could roll that. That's a totally different you could ball try. game. But, right. but yeah, it could be try. a fun challenge. That's it true. would be a fun challenge. That's very <laughs> true. And so the event is happening at the site, right? And use, utilizing the track. Yes. That is still there and still there. open and available, right, Natalie Spruill? That's, and that's correct. an important point to make. Absolutely. Okay. I know now a lot of folks in the neighborhood. The track? love the track and use the track a lot yes and kind of to take us back for those that may not have heard our first couple of shows regarding yeah. this park um, that was something in the very very beginning of this project in the early stages of public input and community you know engagement with the um, all abilities park we heard very loud and clear that people utilize that track and field all times of the day all months of the year um, very regularly and so it was very important to keep it one accessible during the um, building of the first few phases and um, that we keep some rendition of that track as we develop that section of the park moving forward and we again I am happy to say check and check we um, it is accessible and open for anyone in the public to utilize regardless of the event that's upcoming um, and you access the track and field from Comanche Street so Comanche is the street that runs east-west on the north side of the park property um, many people are familiar with Apache on the south side, so it's the street on the other side gotcha. of, that's of the property. Park, that's where you can access you can, it. Yep, curbside parking is there. Access to the track and field are all on Comanche Street. Very good. And um, it's certainly not as busy as Apache Street. That's correct, yeah. 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 And there are a couple of pockets if you'd rather park in a parking lot. Um, it, on the image you see there the, the parking behind the existing facility there along Dustin um, you can park there's a couple of spots to park in there so you've got on the west side of the lot I guess yeah west say. side of the of the property but okay. yes curbside parking on the north side on Comanche that's where we would encourage people to park okay um, and access that track and field very good but the other part of the map that we can kind of see is is where the construction is yeah which is the another fence. exciting part of this story right absolutely fences are up vehicles are moving shovel are abounding and you see a lot of activity more and more every day there uh, it's it's again this is such an incredible project for us um, you know we had the groundbreaking in July and the construction schedule for this project is right under a year 360 day contract okay so we're hoping that um, 360 days from that groundbreaking that was in early July we will have phase one of the park available um, to the community and and again we are working with an incredible um, contractor um, the local contractor um, Sillison and his team they're they're taking this on and working very well um, you know cool. communicating with us and uh, you know they're they're as eager I think and excited to see this park come to life as many of us are in the community um, so it's just we have an incredible team from the city of Farmington to the Tibbetts Hall Abilities Park Foundation um, to the design company planned collaborative Greg Miller and his team they literally I, we spoke of this last time and it's just worth noting again they took this on as a labor of love and every inch of this park is so intentionally designed um, we, we talk about graduated challenges we talk about about, you know a park for everyone and even lately you know within the last month as we've really had um, excitement ramp up around the project um, you know people are like well it's a park for everyone and and we're, we're really educating people to say it's for everyone to play live laugh and learn together mm -hmm. um, through this park so we just hope that if um, if you haven't put that on your bucket list when it gets open, that everyone um, takes the opportunity to stop by, check out the park, um, and really just engage with it. I mean, it's, it's going to be a park second to none in this region. There really will not be another thing like it. Um, so you want to check that out. But to to the construction team, too, you know, I, I had a lot of 
thought, you know, we've worked so long and so hard with planned collaborative in terms of the design and the, you know, the construction documents and all that. And I thought, man, they're going to have a really hard time turning this project over to someone they trust to really implement this. And uh, again, uh, you know, Beanham Sillison and their team, they are as passionate about this project. Um, so, so every corner we turn, every partner we work with or bring on to the team to really make this part come to life, it's an incredible team. I, I just cannot say enough about about that team, um, any facet of it. Um, so we're we're charging ahead, full steam ahead um, to get phase one um, in the ground, nice. above the ground. Right. Slides 30, 30 feet above the ground. So it's yeah. it's going to be incredible. Awesome, awesome. And if my math is correct, that means that maybe a ribbon cutting sometime next summer, if we're talking about three hundred and sixty days, right? Yep. That's the goal. Okay. So today we're on schedule and and we'll be there. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Jessica, this has got to be exciting for um, this. It's, I think a lot of folks were going to be surprised at how quickly the pieces came together and some of the funding and things like that all, mm -hmm. all happened to get this going as, as quickly and the city's component and the foundation's component. Yeah. Once things got going, it was really fast. It took a while to get there because of logistics, but um, yes, yeah, so it, it took a while for us to hit the ground running with fundraising, but we've managed to raise over $2 million so far. Um, our goal is at least $5 million it, because as soon as Phase 1 is completed, we want to roll into Phase 2. We don't want this um, momentum to stop. So there's a lot of opportunities for um, companies to have donor recognition in the park. If they want to know what that looks like, they can ask me or Natalie, and we can give them that information. But their names will be permanently in the park um, at a certain level. So. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And a total of three phases, is that correct, of the total project, Natalie's role? Four, probably three and yeah, a half. We're, we're taking each phase um, one step at a time. Okay. Um, originally, we had three three planned phases. Um, another part to maybe interject here: um, the existing facility mm -hmm. on the property. You'll see some activity taking place there. There's a separate fence that's surrounding that facility, right. and I think it's worthy to note that we have con um, solidified CDBG Community Development Block Grant funding to upgrade the existing restrooms in that facility. So that's taking place simultaneously. Gotcha. Um, as the actual phase one of the park is is going on so you know again when we really spoke with the community and the user groups on this project it was very important to them that they had accessible restroom facilities with the adult high low changing tables and we are happy to report that those are are part of this first phase project of the existing facility to absolutely get those installed so gotcha. We are just um, hitting this project from all, all facets. There's a lot of activity going on in that Absolutely. block of uh, Farmington. That's very true. And for folks who have been here a while, like, like me, um, that existing facility is part of the old, not-so-old library yeah. addition that was built onto the Tibbet School there when it was a school. And that's the one part of the building that you were able to save mm -hmm. to be able to use in this project, which did save, I'm sure, a little bit of dollars, I would think, right? You have the existing structure. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're really excited about um, the future opportunities. We don't quite know what um, all the uses for that facility will look like, but... It's going to be bathrooms. There's, there's more no, room there's that. Yeah, there, there is. It's kind of an open space. Um, it was a library. Think about the library without the bookshelves in it. Right. It's a really unique right. space that has a lot of, uh, you know, opportunity nice. um, and potential for us. So we're really excited to, to get it updated and and to be a seamless part of that park very cool well it'll definitely be used for park restrooms for sure yep, and absolutely. all access restrooms which is another important part of this project so that's an important thing Megan anything to Ooh. chime in about well what are, what are you thinking well, what's going on in that, well, in that brain of yours I'm curious as to what you guys is most anticipated component to the park is like is there a particular ride or like structure that you're like yeah man i know 30 a 30 foot slide is a pretty big deal so that's got to be on the top of the list yeah. but what I mean, else it just depends on what you're into and um for our all abilities park foundation we're just really excited about all the access that's going to be there um for people to play alongside of each other there's like a zip line that somebody you know wheelchair could go down next to somebody who's not um, swing a merry-go-round um, the play space that's coming in phase two I think mm -hmm. um, that's accessible by wheelchair too mm -hmm. it's just incredible there's transfers for the slides um, and then like that 30-foot slide 
I've never seen anything like that. That's going to be crazy. (laughs) (laughs) That's definitely a graduated challenge piece. Yeah, it sounds like it. I don't know. I'll have to work myself up to the 30-foot slide for sure. Oh, but we have some graphics of some of the 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 structures. Yeah. Yes, that's the accessible ones that I just talked about. Yeah. The zip line is the one in the top left Left. corner. Right. Yeah. So there's like a seatbelt. Right thing there that you can get into that, so that's kind of cool. That's yeah. great, and I know um, Natalie, you mentioned that this is going to be kind of the premier all abilities park in the region, and, and there's been a lot of research and a lot of work done, I think, to kind of look at that and say there really isn't anything like this within 200 miles, 180 miles of Farmington, the nearest thing maybe Rio Rancho, I think, right? And that's been around for a few years, right? Yeah, and, and you know, that was really cutting edge at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a park above in Rio Rancho is, is we spent a lot of time evaluating that park and wanting to bring those amenities here to our community. And it's incredible. I mean, again, kind of a nod to planned collaborative and their design work and, and wanting to be cutting edge. And, and yes, this is really great, but we want to make it the absolute greatest we can with with the new technologies and and they've done a lot of study um, there and when we talk about graduated challenges like that was something that came out of this and when I say they they really took design down to literal every inch of the park we had spreadsheets and they had logged every activity every part and piece that was in the park and they have like the riparian area where you can go and um, you know there's water and you know potential things there and and walking and and again the graduated challenges i could talk days about just the intentionality that went into that um but back to your point um a park above is an incredible facility this one just kind of takes it up a notch and it really focuses on on all all abilities having the opportunity to go to that park and and utilize it in a graduated situation where they're you know they may they may there may be someone that that doesn't like a lot of noise so there will be quiet um, areas you know for those that that need a quieter space but then they can kind of take a step out and and get to maybe a more noisy spot and work their way into those different things so it again I know I keep kind of going back to that but but the intentionality that went into this is so incredible that there is nothing there is nothing like it anywhere in the region um and i would venture to say anywhere in the country um Mm -hmm. just with again the the design techniques and and research that went into every inch of it and you know we had the planning meetings where the design company was sitting down with you know the the foundation and our our users of this of this space and place and it, it was incredible for me to see the design team working with those users and saying you guys are the users like what do your clients need what do your family members need like how can we make this more accessible or easy and we were we were turning things a quarter of a turn you know in the plans because the design company literally was all ears they came to the table to really sit and listen and uh, again it definitely check it out that's that's really my resounding ask is that whether you feel like you could benefit from this park or not I'm here to answer the question that absolutely anyone of any age any ability um, whether you love parks or not like definitely give it a try try it out one time and and then we'll chat okay all right who doesn't love a park I want to meet those people I've never met anyone but, but (laughs) but I hear what you're saying and I think maybe Jessica was you telling a story on one of your other appearances here about, you know, being able to have, you know, a family with maybe some, chi- you know, multiple children or siblings, right? And maybe there's one child who can do everything and one child who can't. And this is a park that allows all both of them to play together and side by side and, and do some of these activities like a swing set or whatever together at the same side. And that's what's so unique about this particular park and the design of the park. Yes, absolutely. I think that's what brought a lot of us to the table to come up with this idea in the first place is that um, there's nowhere to go that both of these um, kids could play together. And so we started with a small idea, and it's, it's just gone beyond any of our dreams now. And it's, it's going to be so great to be able to see it in action and see a kid that's typically functioning with their sibling that might need access with a wheelchair or a walker that couldn't do that at any other park. So right. it's going to be 
amazing. That's what's so special about mm -hmm. about this this place and space, yes. which it will be. So that'll be that'll be great. And well, Natalie Squirrel, I want to come back to you a little bit about you know that public private partnership and the thing that the city can do so well. I think is to invest in some of these things and to make Farmington a destination for the region because again, there's nothing like it uh, in the region, in the state, in the country. As you said, I may remind you of that in a year, but yep, absolutely. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Um, but again, to make Farmington a destination of places to go, um, I think we see it with Bistai Bay. I think we see it with Pinion Hills Golf Course. I think we see it with the museums and all the other things that are available throughout the region and attract people in. And this is another one to kind of another feather to go in that cap. At least that's how I see it. Absolutely. You're spot on, Scott. And, you know, it is a testament to our mayor and council and our city leadership, just their commitment to, um, you know, supporting the regional destination, uh, a thought process of, you know, we, we are proud of our community, our our big town. I'm a small town girl, too. Okay. Sorry, Megan. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm you're a city girl, so. Yeah, okay. but, you know, <laughs> we, we have so many amenities to be proud of, and it is. It is a feather in our cap. It's a nod to our leadership, our city leadership, mayor and council, for their support of continuing to want to invest, put their money where their mouth is, essentially, and in investing in these partnerships that are so valuable um, to our local community, but also also to to our, our regional area right and I think too that the hope is that these things will help spur private development and business activity and investment and other things in the community too as folks come to enjoy what the city has already put in and that's kind of a win-win that rising tide raises all boats or something too <laughs> even though we live in a desert yes that's the, that's the saying I'm that's gonna go with. saying yes. yes exactly Megan other thoughts I, I keep waiting for you to chime in well, if, well, if you want I mean, to say something. But we're covering so much. We are. I don't feel the need to like really interject here yeah, other than I'm super excited to, exp as a park lover, Yes. <laughs> I'm super excited to experience it myself. Right. Maybe we can do a KSJ on the road at the oh, park. Oh, I know we will. Oh. Yeah. I know we will. I and want to we'll see you on that 30-foot slide. Get you on that. that you, me on the 30-foot slide, you on the zip line. All right, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. We'll see. They may have to be reinforced, but we'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see I don't want to break it on the first year, but that's okay. So, but that will be exciting. And yeah. uh, again, it's exciting to know that this is on schedule and that uh, things are, are happening at, at the park. And, uh, and Jessica, as far as financing and things like that, I know, again, the foundation is still hard at work raising, as you said, more money for the next phases that are yet to come, right? Because the idea is to when, when the ribbon is cut next summer on phase one, the bulldozers will be back for phase two and, yep. and just keep on going is the idea, correct? Yes, that's our hope. Um, and like Natalie said, we won't really know what that will look like just yet, but we're going to um, have a good idea of what we're needing from the community um, by closer to that point, and we're well on our way. The community has been so generous, and they keep surprising us with how generous they are and we just need some more <laughs> yeah that's great well and i know you've been active in, in searching out grants and other funding mm -hmm. opportunities as well for this project and so that's where a lot some of this other money is coming from too correct yes but a lot has been local and um, we are waiting to hear back from some other grants but yeah our community very good well and i might just chime in here scott um one of the the city is also actively seeking grant funding and we've been awarded um 1.2 million dollars from senator con congressionally directed spending from senator heinrich's office so you know it's it's many hands make light work in sure. a sense and we're all really trying to look at all the resources at our hand and and really just committed to seeing this through but um senator heinrich has certainly certainly done his part nice. and um working with us there too very good well and and a project like this is not cheap because of the intentionality of it i think some of the design work that's gone into it and this equipment is not is not cheap and so as director of parks recreation and cultural affairs it will fall i guess to you and your department to maintain this when they turn the keys over right in, that's in correct. a year or so and yeah. and you folks have a lot of experience maintaining parks and i think farmington's well known for its park system mm -hmm. but um this could be a challenge i guess to keep things um running and, and available and all those things right yeah absolutely but i would also like to say you know we have been very intentional um with that part of it in terms of maintenance so if you are an avid park user i would encourage you to get out and check out brookhaven east park the one that sits right next to child haven right um we when we replace that 
that playground equipment we did that intentionally with some of the parts and pieces like the pour and play is something that you'll see a little bit more of in the all abilities park so and some of the pieces of equipment are um, accessible pieces of equipment so we're already kind of planning okay. ahead and and I guess I'm just um, and tell me what that means when you say pour and play uh, for folks that maybe aren't familiar with that term is sure it, is it, it kind of the covering around the equipment or what are you talking about yeah so access you know wood chips are ADA compliant mm -hmm. but if you've ever tried to push a wheelchair through wood chips it can be a very big challenge so being compliant and being accessible are really two separate things yeah and part of that is the pour and play is like a rubberized material I think is the best way to kind of describe that and it's it's poured in it's a poured surface essentially around equipment so if you go to Brookhaven East um, from the sidewalk you could there will be a path to get in to I think the slide for sure a couple of different parts of the features there so that it's easier to it access versus having to go through the wood chips, wood chips or something um, so yeah mm -hmm. so the pour and play is just it's a it's a smoother surface that is easier to to traverse one way no matter which uh, modality you're using right. um, to get to equipment and and with that um, obviously there is maintenance and care that goes into that that would be different um, for our team to maintain that versus the the wood chip so we're already kind of um, working looking at, at maintenance and um, proud to say we, we kind of saw this one coming and we've we're testing the waters, if you will, okay. on, on most efficient ways to maintain those things. There you go. Well, and that makes sense, right? Yeah. And, and to have some, I guess, in, in storage for when you need to replenish or, or what have you and, and buying more in bulk, I guess, because you'll have a need for it when this opens and, and what have you. So yeah. I kind of can see where you're going with that. So that makes sense to me. So good to know. Good to know. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Anything else? Megan Collop? Uh, I, I keep looking at you. I know. Jeez, you're putting me on the spot. I mean, I know that that's what we do here. It so is. get put on the spot. But that's true. But just want to make sure you, you have an opportunity to ask yeah. what you want to ask, if anything. Mm -hmm. But this is an exciting project. This is a very exciting about. project. And, and like this is said, why we keep following it. I know. That's true. Yeah. So we're very excited. Yeah. So, okay. Fair enough. Well, we are excited for the both of you for this project. And again, the event that's coming up um, on the 15th. 12th, 12th. Mm -hmm. middle of October, but 12th mm -hmm. um, f to uh, raise more money for the following phases for this for this park. It's very it's very exciting. And registration is now open. It's open. Okay. Yes. And then we will October be doing first. registration the right. day of, but okay. Yes. You can do day of. You to get a okay. T-shirt though. Yeah, yeah, okay, right. So you want to strike while the iron's hot and get a T-shirt. That's right. Gotcha. I was going to say, from a fellow event planner, register early. It's so much less stressful, and we get so much more sleep on the planning side. <laughs> you register early, and we can prepare for you. Yes. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so. This year, we're going to do a packet pickup the night before to make that a little easier for everybody in the morning. Um, there at the site at the entrance right off Comanche nice. at 5.30 to 6.30. So if people want to pick up their shirts a day before, then they can just come in seamlessly the next day and start the first wave starts at 9 o'clock. Okay. See? There you go. October 12th, it'll be uh, it'll be great. You can register by October 1st, which is next Tuesday already, for um, a guaranteed T-shirt. And if you have questions, you can email uh, Jessica at taapnm at gmail.com. Perfect. Or message through Facebook or <laughs> website yes. is another way to do that. And uh, you can register online at taapfoundation.com. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Let's get registered. Exciting. Let's do it. All right. You ready? It's, yeah, well, I'm ready. It's You're the one that's going to have to figure out how to walk six mi or six laps. Uh-huh. <laughs> I will wait for you with a donut in hand. How's Perfect. that? Okay. Perfect. With his t shirt because he will register That's to support right. the cause. I, I yes. My t shirt. You're right about that. So, yes. see, it's a, it's a team effort. It is a team effort. So, we can definitely do that. But that's great. Well, thank you both for coming and we really appreciate it. Natalie, again, thank, thank you. you and uh, please extend our thanks to the city, city council, for their leadership in this project. It's really exciting for the whole region. And so, can't wait for that uh, ribbon cutting and uh, try out those new pieces of equipment. So it's going to be great. Jessica, thank you for your thank work. You. And I know you represent the rest of the foundation. There's a lot of people 
besides you that is making yes. all this happen too so shout out to them i will thank you so much you're welcome thank you both for being here our guest this morning here on solutions from the street and uh gosh megan if we have other folks that have some ideas for a potential topic for the show what can please, they do please reach out to us at ksje at san juan college edu drop us a line let us know what solutions you're you're seeing out there we we might think we know everything but yeah, we don't right so only one of us is called mr know-it-all yes and what does he know what does he know and uh, there are things that i don't know so yes drop so us drop email. us a line ksje at san juan college edu exactly exactly and we are here we remind you on the second and fourth fridays of the month with this program solutions from the street on the first third and fifth fridays it's a whole different show Oh, it's a whole different show. Oh, it's different. <laughs> it's it's not it's not nearly as meaningful, I don't think. Not, um, not necessarily. I mean, it's fun. It is fun. Called that's but, interesting. You know, we're not changing lives over here. Well, not with that show. Not with not that with show. That's in, but no. it's, but we open up the phone lines and we invite you to call in and just share whatever's interesting in your world that that week. So, yeah, so it's a fun show. It is a fun show. Don't miss out. And I learned Tune something. In. I learn something new every time we do it. Yeah. So Between the that. three of us, there's always something That's right. interesting going on. Exactly. So there you are. And then tomorrow, you are back on the radio with music. Radio Free Saturday morning, your eclectic music mix. You never know what you're going to hear, as you've said before. Never know. I never know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it can be some eccentric stuff. It could be some old familiars and I some was, new stuff. And I was listening last weekend, and it was a, there was a very nice song, and then there was a very headbanging song that came yes. out right after that. That's by and, design. And, yes. And, yeah, I had to turn the radio down. Yeah. Yes. I did. Because we cover all different genres. You and do. Stuff like that. Yeah. So. Case in point. That's yes. true. Do you remember the theme for tomorrow's well, show? Well, the theme is special guest host picks. Ah. So I have a guest host on, okay. and we will we will be spinning some tunes, some whatever they chose. Mostly from what they chose. Oh, I, I had to add a little flavor. You have some editorial stuff. control. You I haven't did. given it up yet. Okay. No, All right, did not fully give it up. As a station manager, I appreciate that. Yes. So, okay. Nine to eleven a.m. Very good. All right, and we'll give a shout out to our co-host for our other show, Scott Duran, who has a the World Beat Show. Every Saturday, immediately following Megan's show. That's right. From 11 to 12. And so you can hear music from around the world. Yes. That, that one is a really fascinating show. If you haven't tuned in, yeah, it's worth it. And we know we have a lot of fans that listen Saturday morning. It's a block. The three it's hours. It's a rock block. We have, them, we have them locked in. Yes. And we love that. So there you are, everyone. But in the meantime, until then, we have to go. We're out of time. Sadly. I know. So got to go catch a balloon or something. Yes. Right? That's so, right. There you go. So In anyway. our big town of Farmington. Thank you. Yes. Yes. yes exactly. <laughs> Glad to finally see you. Seen the light. That's yes. good. But thank you all for joining us uh, for this edition of Solutions from the Street. We will see you next week, of course, with That's Interesting. Until then, have a safe and great weekend. We'll see you next time right here on KSJE.